Hurts. Oh, that is so wrong. Like, hey, go out with a bang, right? Go on, go big or go home, right? <laughs> Yeah, will willpower challenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, we are going to go over three main types of diets. The first thing is all of these diets work. All right, I'm going to give you guys some descriptive terms today. We want to get you a little familiar with those and which one is best going to suit you. All right, that's what. The biggest thing that we found in the past when we ran these were that people were getting pigeonholed into types of diets that didn't necessarily fit their life at all, okay? If you, well, we'll, we'll just go over these things and you'll listen, see which one kind of most describes you and we'll go from there. So, if you have never weighed or measured your food before, if you've never had nutritional advice from a paid professional before, if you have no children, or if you have a hectic schedule with a little time to eat, the best diet really for you is gonna be a paleo for performance diet. Next, we're gonna go over macros, flexible diet if it fits your macros. If you know what the three macronutrients are, okay, they are protein, carbohydrate, and fat. If you have weighed, measured, or counted your food before, for at least a minimum of one to three months. If you need to have a more regimented structure to eat, if you would describe yourself as meticulous with your eating habits. If you have children or a less than ideal support structure, okay, whether that be spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, if you are single and looking to date, okay, that would be a less than ideal support structure. Also for this, if you're willing to spend at least around $30 a month on a protein supplement. We'll get to that later. Then probably the best diet for you is gonna be, again, macros. The last diet that we're gonna go over is Renaissance periodization. If you are very regimented in your day and your eating habits, if you've weighed, measured, or counted food before for a minimum of three to six months, if you have children, if you have time to meal prep for six meals per day for a minimum of three days at a time. Um, if you're looking for the most detail, tell me exactly what to eat at exactly the same time every single day. If you're willing to spend $100 on an RP template, okay? And if you're willing to spend $60 a month on two separate protein supplements, then Renaissance Periodization is the diet for you, all right? So, again, not all of those things have to fit you, but the one that most describes you is what we're going to recommend for this. I assume who sounds like they fit into the paleo for performance? No one, I kind of assume that, right? We've done that before. Who feels that they best fit into the macros category? Most of you guys, okay. Who feels like they best fall into the Renaissance periodization? category okay all right so all of these are very very similar but they have small things that are changed within them all right paleo for performance we won't cover that too much because no one raised their hand for it all right we've covered paleo stuff in the past very long more boring if you want more detailed questions or you have more detailed questions as we go through this let me know all right we're gonna set those of you who feel that macros best fit you, when we get done today, I'm gonna to email everyone that's on the list. Send me, I'm gonna write the formula up here, but don't worry, I'm gonna do the math for you to make sure that it's correct, all right? So send me though how much you exercise, which is part of the big part of the problem for the formula for that, and I'm gonna send you back your numbers, I'm gonna send you the food journals, and I'm gonna send you all of this outline stuff as well, all right? Yes, Steve. So can you do a combination? So like with my job, like I have to go to business uh -huh. like yeah. a couple times a week. So we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover if, if you're on a certain if you're on a certain diet. We're gonna we're gonna talk mainly. What this is gonna be about is not what we've done in the past is be like, okay, I love nerding out, so let's cover like in depth what's going on hormonally and let's go into the math of all of this. 
what this time what we're gonna try to do where people have failed is in social situations like that. You have to go to a business lunch, right? We have to go to church luncheons, right? Food is fellowship at the church, right? We have to go to that. So same thing, what if you're going to a Christmas party tonight and you're like, oh, I'm starting, right? The, you just said, this is, does the challenge start after the, the Christmas? Awesome. Yeah, right, exactly, right? So how do we work around these real life situations? That's what we're gonna kind of cover a little bit more for everybody, depending, and it's not gonna matter that much which diet you're following. We're gonna go into the planning of how to get around these real life social situations because that's where most people are gonna fail, is be like, okay, hey, um, I have to go to this business lunch and it's not order whatever I want off the menu, it's a pre-done, catered thing, so what am I gonna do with that? Is that, kind of, is that kind of where you're going with your question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like sometimes they're like, hey, we're meeting up at the Mexican restaurant. Right, like, yes. Like, well, what would I eat? And eat right, what do you, food? exactly, yes. So we're gonna, we're gonna cover that here directly. So first, what I wanna go over, you guys look right over here. We're gonna start again. Let's go into meal prep first. All right, because everyone's gonna have to do that. Two things that have made our lives way easier. Instant Pot. Air fryer, all right? I highly recommend those things for your Instant Pot. Basically, however many quarts it is, is how many servings you're gonna get out of that dish. All right, they come in four, six, and eight. All right, they also come in 10, but it's like $300, so I don't recommend them. Um, they're great for meal prepping bigger things. Air fryer also, um, which we've just started using, is a fryer that doesn't use oil. Some sort of weird convection thing. I don't know exactly how it works, but it tastes really good. Both of those, if you're willing to spend about 150 bucks on a thing like that this Christmas, I highly recommend it for both. All right. You're also gonna need a food scale, whether you're gonna be doing macros or if you're doing RP. These are the food containers that we use. Go out and buy some, it doesn't have to just Food scale from Bed Bath & Beyond, you can change the units on it. It has pounds and ounces. The way we measure our stuff is set it on top of there first, okay? I have 1.2 ounces. I'm then gonna put in the amount of meat that I'm eating, whether that's, if you're on RP, if you're, if you're gonna buy an RP template or you already have bought one, right, it's gonna tell you how many ounces of meat to eat. Fill that up to the meat, it's gonna tell you how many zero it out? Huh? Zero it out. When it comes on, it's zeroed out. But I mean, when you have, you don't want the bowl to take up your plate. No, I do. Well, oh. That's the way I measure it. I don't oh. like. I think it's easier to start right zero point zero zero, yeah, yeah. zero it out. I start with my container one point two. Right. If I'm eating six ounces. Right. Right. I'm going to seven point two. Oh, I see. So, so, so you so just do that. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So you put that on it. You hit tear. You subtract. That okay. Like yeah. Zero. So my, my I bought that. The fancy Yeah, I bought the fancy Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. put on that and I hit zero. Yes. Then it goes back down to zero. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. 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 Totally. Yeah. yeah. Add your meat first, then add your carb source. Whether, same thing, if you're doing RP, you're going to put that in. If you're doing your macros, you're going to put in your carb source next. Then we're going to put in our vegetables last. Make sense there? Yeah. Okay, as far as a basic meal planning thing goes, everybody's on the same page with that? For my macros, I'm gonna skip the first part of where we actually, oh, actually I'm gonna put up the, I lied. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna skip that. If you're doing macros or RP, the food choices you're gonna make are gonna be slightly different. You're going to get turkey everything. You're gonna get turkey kielbasa, you're getting turkey sausage, you're gonna get turkey bacon, especially for those breakfast items. You're gonna get egg whites, this is Bonnie's favorite, okay? You're not gonna be eating real eggs anymore. All right, you're gonna be eating egg whites. With that being said, you're gonna need some spices. You're gonna to want to do what I was made fun of for doing and go to Walmart because they have the cheapest spices. And you're gonna to wanna to spend $50 in spices. All right. So low fat things are first. And that's the same thing, that's the same thing with cheese, with dairy. You're gonna to wanna to get your creamers. When you're tracking this stuff, whether you're tracking your macros, 
Um, if you're doing macros, you're going to want to download my fitness pal. It's a free app. You can get the paid version. Uh, I think they're doing a month free trial right now. You can pay for it's 50 bucks for the year or whatever it is per month. I don't know, five ninety nine or eight ninety nine or whatever it might be. And you can then you can actually change in my fitness pal. You can change your things to as close to the numbers as possible if you don't have the paid version. If you do have the paid version, you can enter it exactly. All right, good there. So I'm gonna write is the formula up here for macros. And again, if you're doing RP, it's gonna tell you exactly what to eat. All right, it's gonna tell you something about that. I actually brought mine at Lonnie's. Who are my RP people? You too. All right. So I'm gonna give you guys, let you guys each look at this. It's basically broken down into mine, and this is Lonnie's. If you're doing RP, Basically, you're gonna have whatever time of day you train. It's gonna have base, cut one or mass one, depending on what you're doing. Cut two, cut three, maintenance one, maintenance two, and then new base. And these cover you for about 20 pounds. All right, does that make sense for you guys? Each of these things, you're supposed to stay on for a minimum of two weeks if you're here for when Amy did her thing. Don't start off and say, oh, I need to do this weight super hard. I'm gonna go right into cut three. It's gonna fail. The reason that most of the, most diets fail is because people start eating too little right off the bat, and there's nowhere to go. If you start out, um, especially ladies, on a 1,000 calorie diet, or guys, if you start out on a 1,500 calorie diet, there's nowhere to go from that. There, you can't continue to go down. If you start on something higher, for ladies, I don't like to see anything start under 1,200 calories. I don't like that. I like anything under 1,200, I think is horrendous. I like to start them a little bit higher, around 1,500, and we'll go over the, the macro breakdown. And RP is gonna give you way more than that. The biggest complaint we've heard from RP is, right, you got Natasha? Oh my God, this is so much food. I could never eat this. This is so hard, okay? Especially the newer templates where you're getting two cups of veggies, right? Two cups of veggies per meal, right? That's a lot of vegetables. I have, yeah, I have a, it's, a, it's a lot. If you were gonna eat that. So a plate, three cups of broccoli is this whole plate full of broccoli. Steamed or raw, that's, the, yeah. So two thirds of the plate is two cups of vegetables if it was just like that. That's a ton, right? But that's what you're supposed to be eating on the RP templates, the new ones, with every meal. And there are five meals on there that's not counting the six because it's just casing. Does that make sense for RP people? And it's just based around, again, Carl, you train at night, so yours is gonna be a little bit different. Matt, you train normally in the morning or the afternoon, yours is a little bit different. And each of these also, again, it has times when you train, and it has light day, moderate day, heavy day, non-training day for you RP guys. So, let's get back then to macro people, since again, this is mainly you guys are the fault of what we're going to do. So we have several multipliers that we're going to go over. Eleven is sedentary. Twelve is five or less training hours. Thirteen, five to ten training hours, and fourteen is ten to fifteen training hours. So. Most people are going to be 12 or 13 for the most part, so any activity, same thing that you're doing. If you come in here three times a week, that's three hours. And then if you're doing something else, 
two of those other days, your multiplier is going to be 12. But again, I'm going to give this to you guys, and I'll actually set this for you, but I want you guys to all see it out because I have my whole <coughs> formula set up for everybody to look at. So we have current body weight times our multiplier, and that's going to give us total cal baseline. Then we're going to determine if we're cutting, we're eating for performance, or we're bulking. I assume most people want to lose body fat and gain lean muscle. Yes. Correct? Okay. So all of you guys that are going to be doing that, if you're buying RP, you're going to buy the cutting templates. And if you're doing uh, macros up here, we're going to subtract between 100 and 1,000 calories. Just for our little basis here, we're going to put down that we're cutting. And we're going to subtract. I like to start out with 500 for ladies, and I like to do 700 for men, just to start off. So, once we get our number here, we're going to look at our body weight in kilos. Times and this is going to be our grams of protein. Our body weight in kilos is going to equal grams of fat. And then our total cal up here minus our calories from protein minus Calories from fat are going to equal calories left in carbs calories and carbs divided by 4 which is how many calories carbs have equals our grams of carb alright again this is all going to be provided for you if you want to write that down this is going to be in the what I'm going to give you out here. So, our example, right in a different color here, is going to be a lady. So we're going to have a 150 pound woman, and she is 14 training hours, so she's in here a lot. That equals. 2,100 calories, all right? I imagine that it's very hard for most ladies and some of you guys too, because I've done the same thing those of you that are doing a paleo challenge before, I've seen what you eat. It's hard for a lot of times for you guys to get to 2,100 calories. 2,000 calories is the daily recommended caloric value for men and women, all right? So, our formula over here for body weight in kilos, 68 times two, equals 136 grams of protein. 136 grams of protein times four calories. She's gonna eat 554 calories from protein. Her body weight in kilos, 68, equals 68 grams of fat that she's allowed for the day. 68 grams of fat times nine, which is how many calories per gram. She's gonna have 612 calories of fat. So then for our carbs, she has 2,100 cows minus 545 cow minus 612 cow equals 943 cows from carbs. Then we're going to take that. 943. Divide that by 4. And that's going to equal 235 grams of carbs. Ladies, does it sound like a lot of carbs? 
Guys, does that sound a lot of carbs, right? Because for a 150 pound woman, training 10 to 15 hours a day. So, now that I've bored you with this math over here, let's plan a meal. Let's plan some meals to say, okay, what does this shit mean? So, anybody need to write this down? No? It's on the paper, and I'm going to record this. It's recording now, and I'll post it on YouTube if you want to go back and listen to my voice again. So, everything is said that we're trying to eat for this state person. 136 grams of protein. 68 grams of fat. 235 grams of carbs. So we're going to do some breakfast. We are going to have Said we're gonna eat low fat stuff, right? So we have three slices turkey bacon. Okay, not a bad start. We're gonna have two large eggs. We're gonna have one cup strawberries. And then we're gonna have one cup spinach and a four man gone. Does that sound doable for breakfast or does that sound a lot? That sounds doable for most of you guys, right? Not, nothing too crazy out there, right? So, for this whole meal, what we're going to end up looking at is 20 grams of protein, 23 grams of fat, and nine grams of carbs. Okay? And those are whole eggs. Those are, not those eggs. are whole eggs. Whole, those are not egg whites because I wanted to make it real world applicable. Okay? So the mo most of our turkey bacon has six grams of protein and nine grams of fat. Okay? So even though it's turkey bacon, it still has more fat than protein. Our eggs are the same way 12.5 grams of protein and 13.7 grams of fat for those two eggs, all right? Strawberries have five grams of carbs, minimal protein and fat, and same thing, our spinach has one gram of carbohydrate and less than that of fat and protein, okay? So that's a breakfast. Let's look at lunch, because we're gonna plan our meals. This is where, if you are not planning at least your main meals, and this is where we're gonna get to what's left when we're done and how do we plan for social events, Lunch, let's go with, we're gonna make a sandwich. Okay, basic homemade sandwich. So we need two slices of whole wheat bread. We're gonna do three ounces of deli meat. Because again, we got, that's normally, for most ladies, you're gonna get, if you get an RP template, you're gonna get between two and four ounces, so I just picked the middle. We're gonna have lettuce and tomato. Then we're gonna have one cup of air pop popcorn. And then we're gonna have five baby carrots. So with that, we didn't put any condiments on there yet. Our lunch now. 16 grams protein, 8.1 grams of fat, and 33.7 carb. All right. What do you say? What are you thinking, Thomas? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of protein left. Yeah, right? We're two meals down. Yeah. Let's go to dinner. Because these are the main meals that people can control, especially dinner. We're going to do four ounces of London broil. 
just because it's a fairly cheap, big cut of meat that you can get a lot of bang for your buck out of. We're gonna do one cup of jasmine rice. And if you're doing any rice stuff, they're all about the same, whether it's jasmine rice or brown rice or whatever, they're all about the same. So the white and brown thing. White and brown are pretty much the same. Yeah, they're pretty much, there's, there's like some minor stuff with the micronutrients, but for the most part, it's, your body's gonna digest it the same. Okay. It doesn't matter if, if it's jasmine, if it's white, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna eat a half cup of green beans. So this one is gonna give us 30 grams of protein, 6.6 fat, and 46 grams of carbs. So what we're gonna end up with left after our three planned meals We subtract out all the protein. We still have 70 grams left of protein. We still have 30 grams of fat. And we're still gonna have 146 grams of carbohydrate. Okay. Those three meals don't seem too outrageous, right? Those seems like barely, fairly basic human meals. Now, when we're trying to eat healthier, what happens is these numbers become harder and harder to reach, all right? So how can we, now, the flexible part in that, right, comes in right here, 30 grams of fat, that's good if we're going to a Mexican restaurant, okay? Because we know we're getting refried beans out of a can, right? We know we're getting some sort of cheese sauce, you're not just gonna eat the salsa while someone else has delicious queso. And we know that everything is fried. So you're gonna take in, you're probably gonna crush this number with whatever dish you get. You're probably gonna go pretty high on your carbs because same thing, there's probably gonna be a cup of Spanish rice on there, which again, would be the same thing. And you're probably gonna have minimal protein depending on what, where you go with the Mexican restaurant, right? You may get an enchilada, you may get, unless you're getting like just carne asada and veggies, right? You're probably gonna go over on your fat and you're probably gonna have around 40 grams of carbs you may take, again, 20 or 30 grams of protein down in that. But it's gonna be planning that. So that's where the meal prep comes in for all of this stuff. Because how are we gonna get there to those numbers? Any ideas on how to get, pick up 70 more grams of protein? <coughs> yeah, snacks. Snacks, yeah. Shakes. Shakes. Shakes are good, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that so cheese is an all right thing, but again, if you're looking at like shredded cheese and things like that, the guideline you're gonna get minimal protein return. You're basically just adding to the fat when you add cheese. Yes, dairy is a protein carbohydrate fat blend. All dairy is whether that's cheese, whether that's milk, whether that's yogurt. But ways that we can get around this, or two things happen when people eat this. One, the ladies might be up here saying, that sounds like a lot of food. I don't know if I could eat more. Does it sound, is, is that fairly accurate? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I mean, would that probably fill you up? Those, the, yeah. So what happens if you've done this and you're still hungry? Or sorry, if you're, if you're too full to eat? We're going to drink our numbers. All right? We have 70 grams of protein left. All right? If we were doing RP and we had, and you're willing to spend $60 a month on protein, you could basically get 60 grams of protein covered in two shakes. All right, RP recommends right after you're done, whey protein, all right? We got 70 left. Should track roughly 30, depending on what supplement we're gonna buy from whey. 40 left, and then same thing, we're gonna eat another, drink another case in at night, right before you go to bed. That's another 30. That leaves us with 10. That's pretty close on our protein. And for weight loss, when we're doing this, protein is the most important number for us to hit. The closer you are to protein, 
the better you are. We want to get as close to the protein number as possible. And same thing if we go over your protein, it doesn't matter as much as if you go on these other things. So when you buy your, when you buy your protein supplement, look on the back, read the label. It's gonna tell you probably 20 to 30 grams of, pro, of protein, which is what we want. Closer to 30 would be better. We want to get as little fat as possible in that. And then you're going to look at the grams of carbohydrate that it has. Normally we recommend that you look for something that has half or less in carbs. So if you're getting a 30 gram protein, you want it to have 15 grams of carbohydrate or less. Does that make sense? Yeah. And as close to zero on the fat as possible. All right. Now, the tastier the protein, the higher the carb, the higher the fat, <laughs> right? If you're getting muscle milk, synthesis blend, you know, it's gonna be tasty, but you're gonna have, it's, it's not gonna look like 30, zero, zero. It's gonna look closer to like 25, 15, 20. Synthesis is 24, 17, I don't Right, yeah, okay, yeah. How do you feel about how so it doesn't matter to me if you do a whey protein, collagen protein, casein protein. We just want something that has a high protein count, low fat, low carb. And your collagen has no, no fat. No fat. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It, they don't taste as good. I, Lonnie has some, and I tried it. It's not delicious, it's for sure. I got one that blends yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I have one that uh, blends into like, coffee really well, and I barely taste it. Okay, well, that's, well, that's what I was going to suggest, too. So same thing. If you yeah. – coffee, you know, has five calories – per 12 ounce cup, all right? Where people lose it in coffee is creamers. And I was gonna recommend, what I do is I do cold coffee, whatever's left from a pot, I pour it into my shaker, I let it sit in the fridge, and when I go to do my protein shake, I just put it into my coffee and I have my own little cold Starbucks there. So I think that's an easy way to do it, especially when you're done working out, unless you're working out late at night, that's not gonna be probably ideal for sleeping. But if you want to do something earlier during the day and you know that you're low on your protein, your morning commute could be made better with that. All right, so we got our protein. If we're still too full to drink, right, we still have 146 grams of carbohydrate. All right, that's a lot. Easy way to do that. I think that fruit juice is the best because you can do that with breakfast and lunch. I think fruit juice is the easiest. If you drink two cups of apple juice, it's almost 30 grams of carbohydrate. All right. Now your carbohydrate numbers, they obviously are gonna be higher the more you're working out. If you're doing a non-training day, you're gonna drop your carbs by 100 on a non-training day if you're doing macros. So whatever that number, if it was a non-training day, our uh, fake female here would only be trying to eat 35 grams of carbohydrate. Good there on kind of like a regular day, does that make sense? Yeah. But again, there are other things too that are just carbohydrate that you could do, uh, like none of you guys are trying to go to the game, so I'm not saying, I, I think it's a bad idea to say, hey, I'm just gonna go out and get a bag of Skittles because they have no fat and no protein and our a whole bag of Skittles is like 60 grams of carbs. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't recommend that because most of you guys are doing it for weight loss or health. Okay, not for performance based necessarily. Your fat is normally going to take care of itself. Fat is the biggest thing that people go over because of things like creamers in your coffee. Right, we have a fat free creamer. Every tablespoon is 10 grams of carbs. It's really good though. But it was something that I was like, why, why is this not doing right? Because I was like, ah, it's coffee. I'm not counting. I'm not going to enter my coffee into my stuff. Well, I literally drink a pot of coffee a day. Okay, so eight cups of coffee times 10 is 80 grams of carbs, right, that I was taking in. And I was like, I don't understand. What's going on? So you have to start looking at these things. In the past, when we've done our paleo for performance, we said, I don't care what condiments you use. It doesn't matter to me. That's not true on RP or on macros, okay? Ketchup is not awesome as far as, as far as your carbs, yeah. So, you know, if you're like, oh, like, 
I did air fryer french fries, like Sam said, and then I used like a, a, a toddler size amount of ketchup, right? <laughs> And I'm like, I don't understand. I eat this every day and my macros look right. Well, okay, well, I'm taking in 40 extra grams of carbs through ketchup. Or same thing if you're using regular Hidden Valley Ranch, right? You're gonna beat that fat very quick on that one (coughs) one salad of ranch dressing. So that's where you're gonna look at your condiments as well. Now the other side, my gentleman. What if you are close to your numbers, right? Let's say that you, you hit all these, even though these are lady numbers, and you're still hungry. What are you gonna do? Increase your vegetables. Huh? Increase your vegetables. Yes, Incre- increase your vegetables, totally. So that was the same thing, we went back, right? We said that our plate, that this is three cups of broccoli, you're gonna try to eat, and if you're on RP, they're gonna want you to eat two cups of vegetables with all five of your meals, all right? If you have, if you added a cup of spinach to every meal that you had, okay, or I think a cup of spinach is better, and this is after it's steamed. I'm gonna say the three cups of post Yeah, so whichever, whichever of these that you're gonna use is what you want, I want you to stick with, okay? So that's the thing, with RP, when they tell you, it doesn't, the, the Ben debate of, okay, is it two ounces before I cook it or two ounces after? So, right, yeah, so it's, yeah, right, yeah, a cup, yeah, a cup, uh, yeah, you could steam down a whole bag of spinach into probably like five cups for sure, maybe less, maybe three. So, I, I use all the vegetables steamed. I do all, I do all my veggies steamed. Unless they have to be, like, unless they're like specifically raw, like they don't change the size really. A cup of steamed broccoli is the same size. Right, um, a cup of roasted carrots is the same size. A cup of roasted potatoes, same size. So any of those, you, I, I think it's better to use it steamed because it's so much bulk too. So if you're hungry, you're trying to add in a ton of calorie negligible and carbohydrate negligible real vegetables. And again, that can be whatever you like. There are plenty of delicious recipes out there with things like an air fryer or things on the instant pot that aren't going to add anything against your carb count or your fat count. Questions on basic meal planning. Like this. No? Alright, I'm going to run the restroom real quick and we're going to come out and we're going to do social situations and booths. Questions off the top of your head before we move on to social situations and booze. So. Okay. I mean, there are, you get tired of eating the same type of meat, so it doesn't matter to me if it, like, so a lot of ladies don't like red meat, right? If you like chicken, right, is chicken okay for you? Okay, okay, um, I mean, it, it, there are vegetarian options, but you're just gonna have to eat a whole lot more of it. Um, you're gonna have to eat way more tofu to have to get the same amount of meat out. What I, w- what I would suggest is, and what we've done for paleo people in the past that are tired of a certain thing, is switch up, think more ethnic, okay? 
if you're eating, right, if it's because of, like, a church-related thing, right, and it's, like, I know, like, the Baptist church, like, chicken equals, like, fellowship, like, so, you know what I mean? You're going to get, it's all varieties of chicken and all the casserole varieties and then all the desserts. So I get it there. You're going to want to try to think something different, you know, whether that's Asian, right, whether it is more Mexican, and that has to do with just the spices and the way that you're going to eat it, right? So if you're like, oh my God, I can't see another piece of chicken. All right, well, what type of fish? You know, they're, they're, people don't bring, I, I've rarely seen, well, that's not true because we live in Thompson Beach, but they would do like a fish fry. But for the most part, people aren't bringing in fish dishes to church. Um, they're not bringing in like any sort of shellfish. They're not doing mussels. They're not doing um, scallops and shrimp and crawfish, and things like that look at those options what I would say first if you're like I'm tired of you know turkey I'm tired of this you're gonna look at different types of meat you're gonna look at different ways to prepare pork um, we do we everyone kind of rotates the same thing there are plenty of delicious ways to eat you know pulled pork there are if you're just doing pork you can do carnitas like a very Mexican way to do it which is it's, I mean it doesn't matter it's still pulled pork Right, but it changed, it totally changes the flavor of like, this is barbecue and this is Mexican food. You know, or same thing if you're like, I like Indian food and I like curry. You know, you're gonna look at, try to look at different ways, ethnically, that you can get different flavors so you're not so tired of it. And I think that's a good way for meals in general. You know, if you're rotating through, yes. So I like that stuff, like, first of all, I like meat over and over. Okay. Yes. Right. Off the top of my head, I have none right. because that's, the, that's like say, that, that. So that's the first time that we've had that because it would be like in the past. I've been like same like Andy was vegetarian and I was just like. Why do you do that? He was like, oh, a China study. And I was like, and I told him why it was wrong. But if you're doing it like same thing for whatever reasons that may be moral or this or that, yeah. I don't try to change people's opinions on that. Yeah. So off the top of my head, I do not have any, but I will go out and find some. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty out there. Um, and we're going to go over resources right after we do the rest of like other like social situations um, as far as same thing. I have several that are back in here, but um, I think that the RP YouTube channel itself is amazing because they give out plenty of recipes. There's another place, uh, Stronger You, on Instagram and YouTube. They post recipes all the time. Um, yeah, let me look. Let me look into that, and I'll send that. Um, I have a yeah. picture. I just screenshot. Um, so I have a sports nutrition. Uh huh. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I can post that on. Yeah, totally. Yeah, put it on the on the nutrition or the members page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Other questions before we get into social situation planning? No. Do you count mustard? Yes. Yes. Everything. Everything. When you're doing the macros or you're doing RP, everything that you're putting in, you're gonna try to log. Now, for those of you, and same thing, I'm gonna send out the email later today. If you're doing the macros and you're gonna log everything in MyFitnessPal, what I want you to do for the first week is just log what you eat. I don't want you to try to go and hit your numbers right away. I just want you to see how you normally eat. And if you start planning some, you're like, hey, I'm gonna start eating healthier, that's fine. But don't worry about hitting your numbers for the first week. I just wanna see how you eat, basically. And that's gonna give me a better idea of how to help you. Because if you tell me I'm trying to hit these numbers and I totally changed everything that I'm eating, I'm not gonna know how to help you best. So for the first week, if you're doing, or if you, do you already have our fleet template? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. Um, you, can, you can put that in, but just write in into your notes in there when, when I send the food log out is same thing, what you struggled with. And we'll try to give it the same thing. And Matt, you don't have our fleet template? No. Do you? no, okay. So same thing for you. But then the rest of you guys just, 
log it how you're normally going to eat. And I know you guys have RP template yeah. before, right? So. I can, I can find okay. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. Because the, these are all basically the same. It's just slight differences on how they get you there with the starting point. So, social situations. If we know, you say you have uh, two business meetings, two, two business lunches guaranteed per week? Usually. Don't Usually. Have okay. So, if we have two per week, and do you, know, do you guys normally rotate around like the same places? Always different. Always different? Okay. So. It's easy when I go to a steak restaurant. Right. It's like, oh, six ounces of this. Right. The vegetable and the yes. Rice. Yeah. So if you're going, I would start looking at the things that are going to stump you. Okay. So same thing if you're like, all right, if we go to Mexican restaurant. Okay. If we go to, I don't know, Thai. If we go to Asian. What else are they? Uh, Italian. And pick a dish that you know that you like. Go ahead of time. Oh, okay. Ahead of time, right? So you're gonna, I mean, you're basically you're gonna plot ahead. Mm. You're like, okay, my favorite thing to eat is I don't know, I don't know any Thai food actually. Thai. Yeah. Well, okay. Thai. Thai. I like it. And you, uh, I don't know, you get general sales. Yeah, general sales. Okay, and I don't know, since we were joking about it like earlier, we, uh, you're gonna get a tour of Italy. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. 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 We were joking about, we were joking about that yesterday. So, and then Mexican, I don't know, you're gonna get enchiladas, something easy. I get combo. So, you're gonna go to My Fitness Pal and you're gonna look at the generic version of that. And you know, if you, you know, you have these on every, it's like a conference call, right? You normally, whatever, Monday and Wednesday or Wednesday, Friday, right? For your day that day, that's gonna be the meal that you plan. And then you're gonna work around everything else. Right, if you had all those numbers left over, right, you're like, okay, well, let me see where my enchiladas gets me of the 70, 30, and 146 of what's left. That's one way to do it. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of those restaurants do have. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's a great. If yeah, if you know what you're gonna do, but have it planned out already as the generic version. You know, so that way, same thing. If if you end up going to, I don't know, Mangiano's instead of Olive Garden or Carabas, you know, you have a rough idea, and then you can later on correct it to get the, get the updated ideal version. So next, same thing. What if we're doing stuff from like church and we have no clue what Grandma Bessie puts in her green bean casserole, but we know that she's gonna serve it, all right? Again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna plan for the generic version of whatever we know that always shows up, right, at a fellowship day. Or same thing, if you've done, you know, if you know the people, right, which is a lot of time, right, yeah. by doing it in yeah. church, you know, right, same thing, we talk about people are creatures of habit, same thing, Grandma Bessie always serves the same things at every time when she hosts Bible study at her house, right, they're going to, right, I mean, is that fairly accurate for the most part, right, they're going to have a route about the same thing, yeah. so you're going to look at the generic version of whatever that is. Now, since... Again, whether it, it, it's business or whether it, you know, it's what well, your job and religious is tied in together, that how are we going to plan around the rest of that day, right? If we know that they're not serving anything that's good, what we're essentially going to try to do for that day, and if we don't know exactly what's there, is we're going to try to eat as paleo as possible leading up to that, right? If we know that when we leave here, that we have a party tonight at girl 13 and uh, we've selected less than healthy options like mac and cheese bites with <laughs> sour cream and you know things like that and red velvet cupcakes and you know that I know that I'm gonna have a few drinks I'm gonna plan my day is I'm gonna eat paleo for the rest of the day I'm gonna eat let hunger be my God 
and I'm going to eat as much meat and as many vegetables as I want leading up to that for the most part. Because same thing when we look at booze, right, is one of the things that we always like to go over. One ounce, right, equals 12 ounces, equals five ounces. Everybody remembers this from like health or like family life or family planning or whatever it's called. Hang on. Right. All these things depending on, right, our beer. So our booze, all our all of your main boozes, right? If you're gonna drink, uh, I don't know, hypnotic or uh, what, Saint Ives Special Brew or something, right? You know, it's gonna have more sugar than than some of these other things. But if you're if you're drinking your basic whiskey, vodka, rum, gin, right? Anything, any brown liquor, any white liquor, these you have between seventy and ninety calories, and they are basically zeroed out as far as Protein, carb, and fat. Okay. For our beers, if you have a light beer, you're looking at around 100 calories for the most part, whether that's Michelob Ultra or whatever it might be. These are a little bit different. They have about less than, less than one gram of protein. And then they have about three grams of carbs. Your regular beers, whether it's like a Yingling or Budweiser or something, you're looking at around between 12 and 20 grams of carb. And looking at two grams of protein. And again, no fat. And your wines, they all have, whether it's white wine or red wine, they all have about four grams of carbs and then zero fat and zero. But again, my fitness pal does have a scanner in it. So anything that you can scan that as a barcode, liquors, foods, you can scan it and get the accurate representation on my fitness pal. Questions of what we did not cover so far. Does that kind of give you a better planning handle on social situations because again that's where like same thing i mean we're going through the holidays everyone knows that they have to go to a million christmas parties yeah. everyone knows that you're going to do something for new year's um and same thing if it's the same thing if it's a church event right and you know you're going to drink sparkling cider you know look at the calories on that you know same thing if you know hey it's new year's and i'm going to new york and i'm about to have 10 bottles of champagne look at the bottle you know the difference in that Just, if, if you eat, yeah, okay, so eat, eat meat, okay. eat vegetables, eat fruit. Okay. Yeah, meat, veggies, fruit. Doesn't matter in unlimited amounts. Okay. And try to try to eat nothing else on on that on that social situation day. And you can eat, use hunger as your guide. You leave here and you're starving. And you're like, hey, I just had you know the, the leaner the meat the better. But on paleo, if if it tell people had a face and a soul. I need it. <laughs> it's like a kidney diet, right? Yeah, yeah. Other questions? That's it, I answered everything. Besides the besides yours, which I will get to. Deer is a good lean meat, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wild game is totally fine. Yep. Yes. So when, you, when we talk about our numbers, mm -hmm. we have to keep that amount of protein. You're trying to get as close to that as possible. Okay, now, that being said, again, you are a uh, human, and we're going to adjust those numbers as we go, mm -hmm. all right? So the, the plan is over the next six weeks, if you're doing macros or you're doing RP, is each week I want to get you closer to your numbers. And if we need to change those, like I'm going to give you feedback on week to week, hey, right, we started doing it a couple weeks ago, and I said, hey, worry about, let's worry about trying to get close to this number first, right? And we got there a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and each week is say, okay, hey, I saw that we're still 
for the most part, 40 grams of protein short. While I want you to try to add in, I don't know, two ounces of deli meat at breakfast and lunch. And let's see if that gets us a little bit closer. And then instead of being 40 grams away, we're 30 or 28 or whatever it may be. So we just want to get you little by little and it should be, we want it to become a sustainable way that you can eat. Because all these diets, same thing, you may need to change them as your life changes, right? Me and Lonnie used to eat paleo super easy. Our kids were teenagers and they did not want to be around us at all. So when we meal prep stuff, it was all ours, right? We grill up all our meat, steam all our veggies, do all the paleo recipes and stuff like that. And it was good and it was delicious and it worked and it was great. And then we got a grandson, yeah. right? And the kids moved in with us and they were like, oh, hey, this is really good. And our grocery bill went sky high. And we're like, we have no, we got to do something else to feed these kids because we can't be like, you know, we can't afford this grocery bill. So same thing we changed and we did macros for a while. We're like, okay, hey, because I can build in, you know, some bulk food, mm -hmm. right? I can give them a cup of rice. And that keeps the, that keep, rice is obviously clearly cheaper per pound, right, <laughs> than steak and chicken are. So we changed to that. And then we said, okay, we're doing that for a while. We kind of like it, blah, blah, blah. And then we looked at later on at RP and same thing. It was even more detailed and it has timing and works, you know, but does that, it works better for Lonnie. I'm essentially kind of doing a, a little bit. I know we said each one, you should try to blend them, but I'm essentially doing macros in an RP style because I know I just took my RP template and did the macros for it. I just looked at the ounces of meat and the veggies and the carbs and mapped it all out. And I essentially make mine closer to macros probably than RP. So they all work but it's just which one fits you the best. Good? Yep. So with macros, like RP mm -hmm. was like basically five meals a day. Mm -hmm. So yours with the macros, it's kind of three and then you just kind of fill in the other Well, if you know, I still, I or plan it. Still yeah, I plan it, I try to plan it as five. Okay. I try to plan it as five. Um, it's very, it's very close. I think when it, like I put up a bunch of different like YouTube videos when we did like, we did everything. We did the paleo for performance. We did macros and we did RP. I think it was like two years ago now. And we did each diet for six weeks or and we, we did the whole thing for six weeks and we did each paleo for performance for two weeks straight. We did macros for two weeks straight and we did RP and then we mapped it all out at the end and both mine and Lonnie's. Everything was super close together because we did, again, a paleo for performance and we were eating rice and sweet potatoes, which is the healthy carbs that, again, I think we, I tagged you in it right on the nutrition page right a few days ago. Um, and you get, just pass it and you can look at it. So it's just uh, the, the carb guide for RP, they want you to eat healthy. The difference with the macros, it just allows you, depending on how many meals you're planning, it just allows you that more flexibility to, if you plan those three meals that we talked about, and then you still had your, your business dinner or business lunch that you had to go to, you could just subtract it out of what was left, right? Or you could, or you could go the opposite way and you could just say, hey, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna plan my dinner and whatever's left for my day, you could work around it. So it allows you some flexibility. If you're like, hey, you know what? I feel like a Krispy Kreme donut and you can fit that in based on what's the meals that you have left that are planned around. Gotcha. But the problem, the problem that we were having when we did, when people did uh, the macros before, was there was no planning. People were just like, oh, you know what? I feel like Chick-fil-A today and I'm gonna eat, you know, the whole Chick-fil-A shebang. I'm going, you know, spicy chicken sandwich combo meal plus nuggets and Chick-fil-A sauce and sweet tea, and then I'm just gonna see what's left. <laughs> right, which is like, I mean, but that's what people were doing. Yeah. They were, cause they were like, ooh, it's flexible. I get to eat pizza and then figure out what's left. Like that's a horrible way yeah. to plan it. It's just be like, oh, well, I'm eating Napoli's today. I'm eating a whole pizza and then I'm just gonna see what's left. 
So basically one big huge meal. Right, yeah, yeah. Because they need, we talked about how hard it was, like how much was left when we do real food. The opposite is not true. If we go back and I put in, in my fitness pal, I put in uh, sausage and uh, so egg McMuffin and hash brown from McDonald's. And then I put, same thing, Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwich, waffle fries, sweet tea for lunch. And then for dinner, I put in, I don't know, Chipotle burrito with extra guac and double meat. I'm, I'm way over on the day. I'm way over on everything. I'm definitely way over on fat because our protein and carb have four, gram, uh, four calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram. So, which is why fat is so much lower. And most of the time, everything ends up being the old joke, if, if you guys were, or remember from, CrossFit still promotes the zone diet, right? And which is just essentially a different way to count macros. Um, they call it blocks though, when they give people stuff. And the ratio that came from that was 40, 30, 30, protein, carb, and fat. Well, most of, the, most of these diets all up here, all end up being 40% protein, 30% fat, and 30% carb. So they all have these similarities. It's just, what angle do you take to get there? Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So there, again, everyone, if you got like all these guys, all these top guys from each diet together, they're basically gonna agree on the main points, but they're just gonna nitpick on their diet slightly different. Like and they're going to present it slightly different, huh? It's like religion. Yeah, totally like religion. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right? It's like stained glass, like, oh, I'm sitting over here and it looks green, and I'm sitting over there and it looks red. You're like, there's still sunlight coming through it. You know. Good? Yeah. Other, no other questions? Okay. Yes. So, I think it's, I think, like, the overall idea, I think it's really good going through the holidays, that no matter what, you're going to have the biggest challenges and stuff like that to keep on keep on eating this properly so that once we get you're done with this six weeks if from there it should be easier after yeah if you, yeah if you can make it through like so yeah, i think so too through, yeah through this time fairly fairly well by planning everything from there on you should be able to like you stay focused on it but it's not as challenging because yeah of social situations and everything else. well the funny thing too is like i mean people i agree with you but people could find what we found in the past, everyone can find an excuse year round. Be like, oh, well, it's summertime. Like, <laughs> I'm supposed to party. You know, and like, how can I not go out and like have drinks by the water? How, you know, how can I not enjoy this beautiful day without like, you know, a cold beer? You know, and, and the same thing, like, oh, well, it's spring now. And like, you know, how can I not go out for St. Patty's Day? And how, you know, how can I not go out for Valentine's Day? So, yes, totally. But if, if you, I think these are the toughest times, again, from Halloween through mid-January, if you could do it when, same thing, when it gets dark at 5 p.m., you know, and, and make it through those, then you could definitely do it. You could definitely continue on. And again, there's room for variation in there. These are all averages, and you're striving to be more consistent. You're not striving for perfection. And that's where we run the last problems that we have, and kind of how we'll close it out is don't let yourself be burdened with like Catholic guilt over one mess up. Because if you do that, like that's where, same thing, most people have like problems with food, right? And it becomes like one mess up, it becomes this vicious cycle, uh, especially for ladies. You know, I'm under eating, I'm under eating, I'm under eating. And then I binge eat, and then I feel terrible about myself. And then I go back, under eat, under eat, under eat. Binge, under eat, under eat, under eat, binge. And, right, yeah, totally, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, right? So it, it becomes this, like, terrible cycle. So if you can just start working towards consistency as opposed to perfection, that's where you're going to see bigger results is the same thing. Like, we talk about, like, in the compound effect, if you can get 1% better each day, you're going to see massive results, you know, in the end. So it's just little bits of things that you can do to overcome whatever it might be, whatever's holding you back, social situations or whatever it is. Question, yes. Like, mean, like, this is not necessary. Like, I know one of the good things about paleo is that you kind of have this built into like a four hour cheat window. Uh huh. Yep. So, kind of like now, like Friday evening, that's kind of like I'm saying the cheat window, 
uh -huh. the pizza or something. Yeah. Like cheap day. So uh -huh. I guess when that goes, you don't necessarily have cheap days, but what else? You're, you yeah, you're just gonna you're gonna plan. You, I mean, you could plan a less than ideal day. Okay. Again, like it, you know, I think that if you have bigger health or weight loss goals, mm -hmm. right? If you want to lose more than ten percent of your body weight, if you want to drop more than 10% of body fat, the stricter you need to be and the closer you need to like be doing healthy things. But if your goals are a little bit less um, than those, then by all means, you can, it, it's made for real life. And that's again where diets fail is the monotony and the boringness of it all. So if you wanna plan in those things, so it's not necessarily, again, the bigger the average, right? 136, 68, and 235. So if you don't hit that every day, but if we start to look at on my fitness pal, you can go and you can look at your week average, right? And your week average is you feel like you had a bad day because you went way over or something. And your average ends up being 140, 70, I don't know, 220 over a week. That's still pretty good. That's still pretty close, right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's really close. We're looking at 15 grams times four. We're looking at a difference of 60 calories, you know, down a little bit over here, 18 calories, you know, and again, with eight calories there. And then you can look at it, same thing, over a month. And then maybe it looks a little lower. Maybe it's 133, you know, 69. 230, that's still pretty close, right? So if we look at averages over time, that's where, again, the consistency comes into it. So yeah, you can buy them, I mean, you would just plan that day. You know, you say, hey, I wanna eat pizza on Fridays. I know that I get Napoli's pizza and I eat four slices of, you know, sausage and pepperoni. I'm just gonna plan the rest of my day accordingly to make it fit. Other question I have, what do you do with the air fryer? Uh, so we've been doing fried chicken, essentially. We, uh, we did wings, so it's still like the old paleo thing was like, don't eat any breaded stuff, right? Well, we're breading it, and then we're putting it in the air fryer, and it comes out like it was fried in a fryer. But we're making it from scratch. We're using chicken breast, Old Bay breadcrumbs, so it's not adding any fat to it. It's cooked with like a convection. And then the same thing for like, we did like sweet potato fries, like spicy sweet potato fries, regular French fries, but then we're not adding the fat to it. Yeah, my mother had air fry like last year. She had some chicken that was like so good. Was yeah, like, it was super good, good, super crispy. Yeah, you, you, we, we took, we just take a pan and you spray the inside and then it cooks with, a, again, a convection. I'm not sure of the science behind it. But it cooks with convection flip it over halfway, put it back in, and it comes out like it was deep fried, but you're not adding the fat to it. Cool, yeah. thanks. Good? Yes. No other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna send you guys, um, send you out, send out an email of all these things that we went over. Send me back. We're gonna do measurements okay. on Monday and Tuesday or anytime next week, okay, when you guys come in. We're gonna get your weight, we're gonna get your measurements for the challenge, and then go from there. Okay. Good? Yep. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, I bought one of those in some pots. Yeah, it's amazing, right? And another, like, same thing, if, you're, if you fall into like the I'm always hungry category, what I started doing, what we did on RP, is I eat, I start with a salad, and we, then I eat a soup, and then for for lunch. Thank you. Yeah, I bought the um, it's a hot cookbook too. It's got some pretty good uh, recipes. Yeah. yeah.